Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mystery Channel. I am your host, Mystery, and today we are beginning King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella, uh, produced all the way back in 1988. Uh, this game marks a departure from the previous tone of uh, King's Quest III. It is far less difficult, it's far less obtuse, far less cryptic, far less complicated. We have about a 24-hour time period, or at least 24 hours in the game, to do everything we have to do. Uh, some things are going to have to be done at night. Some things are going to have to be done during the day. And overall, it, it should be a fairly easy run. Uh, this game is also very important because it's one of the earliest games with a female protagonist. 
in fact, series creator Roberta Williams uh, famously said that she was she was actually really uncomfortable writing the death scenes, as I'm sure you can imagine. There will be some. Uh, writing the death scenes for Rosella, because it just wasn't something that you did back then. Another thing we do have to finally be thankful for is we have a volume control. And I might... Uh, might just go ahead and tuck the volume down a little bit. If we have to bring it up, if we have to lower it down, we'll see. But this should mean that I have a lot less work to do in post, and it should definitely mean uh, we won't have the trouble we had with King's Quest Three, where I was recording it without multi-tracking the audio, and then there was unskippable music in the ending. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Actually... Let's just admire our beautiful little outfit. Oh, look at our swishing, our swishy hair. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. And boy, what an intro, huh? That opening cutscene was something else. Oh, this is also pretty. Oh, look, a little fisherman over there on the pier. I don't know if this is really the way I want to go, though, but... Gosh, this is so cool. You can really see you can really see how they're advancing along now with the trees and the backgrounds and everything. Gosh, this is great. But you know what we have to do. You know we have to test the water. I think it's fine. Yep. Yep. Rosella knows how to walk. So, uh yeah, so we uh our story is that we've you know, we're picking up exactly where the previous game left off. Our father threw the hat, and just as he threw the hat, he suffers a, a terrible heart attack. And and King Graham is is on the verge of his deathbed. And we've got to we we've got to come here. We've talked to the the good fairy Janesta, uh, and her talisman has been stolen by the evil Lot. And we have to we have to get her talisman back in order to find the magic tree that bears the magic fruit that has the magic healing power in order to save our magic dad. And it's all very magical. Oh hello. You see a beautiful wild unicorn in the meadow. Its coat is dapple gray and its wonderful horn shines like gold. The unicorn shies at your approach and trots away. No, come back, unicorn. No. Well. Can we follow it, maybe? Hmm. So there's a door in the in the hill. Oh. Uh. Oh no! You're caught. The terrible ogre grabs you by the braids and drags you off at an untimely end. Dinner will definitely be on you tonight. Oh, oh look, no! Look at that face. Oh, gosh. Oh, that is brutal. Oh, that is not okay. Thank you for playing King's Quest for The Perils of Rizzo. Next time, be more careful. Wow. Yeah, I can understand why Roberta was uncomfortable. You know, things get more vivid as things get more advanced. And also, this is Roberta herself. Big Berta. Man. Mm. Actually, I think I need to turn the volume up a little bit on my end. I don't know exactly how well that really is. <clears throat> well, that was that was a start. <laughs> that was certainly a start. So let's not go to that house. But let's go back and see if we can see that unicorn. Oh my god, isn't this little little river so lovely? A little crick? I love little cricks like this. I used to play in one when I was a kid. When we go up home to Virginia. Oh, 
Come back, unicorn. No. Oh, well. Ooh, what's this? Look, bird. The raven doesn't look to be a friendly bird at all. Uh-oh. And that's another thing you'll notice, that the parser now pauses the game. So no more trying to speed, speed type anything. We do still auto walk. Uh, but this is the last game where we're going to have... Game doesn't understand area. Okay. Look field. Game doesn't understand field. Look flowers. Colorful wildflowers grow among the small rocks and bushes of the meadowland. Uh, this is the last game with the parser. Uh, when we come into the next game, we'll be on a point and click. And we'll talk more about that then. Ooh. Look house. See the back of an old shack. All right. Fair enough. Go ahead and save it. Gosh, this game is beautiful. Oh, we've made it around to the pier. So if we go down this screen... Yeah, okay. Okay. So that's where we are. How do we get over here? What's north of here, I wonder? Before Just before I go in. Man, look at that swish. Do, 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 do. Oh, hello. Uh, look, man. You see a lively creature who is, at the same time, both man and goat. He is a satyr, and his name is Pan. He seems to be greatly enjoying his flute music. You attempt to speak to Pan, but he pays you no mind. He's too wrapped up in his flute music. Okay. I suspect we shall have more to do. Man, look at that strut. I suspect we will have more to do with Pan later. Okay, we're back here at the pool. Pan's now gone. Okay, so this is the beautiful little creek. Or little crick, as I call it. Ooh. Gosh, this is gorgeous. I love this. This is already a giant leap from King's Quest Three, but just just wait till the next one. It will be utterly unrecognizable to the previous installments in the series, trust me. Let's try going this way, maybe? Head north. Oh. Look. Pond. It's a very pretty little pond. Floating upon it are many beautiful water lilies. You spy a large frog sitting on top of a big lily pad, and yes, it's wearing a little gold crown. <gasps> Can we go into the water? Oops, you scared the frog away. No! Oops, you scared the frog away. Okay, so he comes. So I've got to find a way to to not scare him when I approach. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Let's get off that screen. Oh. 
That's interesting. He doesn't necessarily go back when I leave the screen. He goes back when I get far enough away from the pond. If Just in case you need help pointing him out. There he is, right there. Okay. Hmm. That's a little bird in the tree. You see, a, you, you see small birds here and there. Okay. What's that in the distance? Is that the bath? No, that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be on the right thing to be cycling through that, I wouldn't think. Oh! Well, I would be wrong. It was, ex it was exactly that. Oh, and Pan's back. In a lot of ways, I just sort of find this one to be a lot more whimsical than the others. This first episode really is just going to be sort of learning the lay of the land. Uh oh, is that the is that the ogre's house where we had our first untimely end? Let's go find out. <clears throat> Gosh, Rosella's so cool. Uh, this is the nasty ogre's house. That is exactly where we are. Oh, uh, these are vicious looking trees, aren't they? Best to stay clear of them. And what would happen if I wandered near one of these trees? You've really gotten yourself on a limb this time. You've really gotten yourself out on a limb this time, Rosella. Oh, and now the sass begins. <laughs> yes, these games are just going to become more and more sassy as time goes on. Mm -mm -mm. I love the way Roberto, like... Looks you in the eye when she tells you that you're not good. <laughs> mm. So that's back there. <coughs> mm. More spooky trees. I'm sorry, does that tree... Does this tree have a, have a little tree butt cheeks? What is that? That is some tree tushy, is what that is. Ooh, spooky house. This is not a pleasant house. In fact, it's downright scary. It looks old and abandoned, and badly in need of tender, loving care. To make matters worse, it sits right in the middle of an old cemetery. Oh, no, no. Call me crazy, but I suspect... Oh, you can see it right back there. Call me crazy, but I suspect... Uh... I suspect we're going to have to come back here at night time. Ooh, uh -oh. I don't like the look of any of this. Oh, but this is so much prettier. <laughs> Just instantly. Instantly not scary anymore. Okay, we're probably going to need... You know, she said she turned her into a peasant girl so she wouldn't bring attention to herself, but, like, the little, little sleeve over the shoulder thing when she's walking... Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Rosella's a babe. Now, when I was looking up information on this game to do my little my little intro that I usually do, where I try to give some kind of background, um, it said that Rosella and Alexander are twins, which I never knew. And I don't think that that's really accurate, because I know in the seventh game they're going to say she's 16, 
and it said in the third game that he was 17. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't exactly say that either of these are carved in stone. The lore for these games is, like, carved in stone, but I always assumed she was his little sister. Ooh, what is this? What is this charming little place? Look house. The roots of this great tree envelop a little snug house. Smoke lazily curls from its chimney, and an old rustic water wheel rests beside the river. Look door. It's a small wooden door. Oh, oh my gosh. Why, 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 Windows? Why do you keep doing this to me? Oh, I hate it when Windows keeps... It keeps asking me about my color scheme. I run an old Windows 7 machine. I don't like 8 or 10. And I love this old computer, but she's... She's... She's on her last legs, I'm afraid. And she's... She's, she's, she's becoming... Well, she doesn't like playing a game and recording it and, and all that, and I'm afraid she's she's getting a little cantankerous in her old age. Knock loudly on a small door, no answer. And door. Look. Room. This is the main room of the Seven Dwarves Cozy Tree House. What a mess it is. <laughs> Well, look, shelf. See, nothing special. Look, table. See, a long wooden table. Empty soup bowls are left on it. Clean room. Oh my gosh. Oh, dang, Rosella. She got that clean jitsu. Oh my gosh. You go, girl. What are you gonna do? Oh! <laughs> Oh, I love Rosella. I I love Rosella. I've always been in love with Rosella. I hope to marry a Rosella someday. I first my first King's Quest was number seven, so I've always I've always just adored her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you hear the dwarves approaching. You watch quietly as the dwarves fill in one by one, get a bowl of soup, and take a seat at the table. chance to try and steal some soup before they showed up. They sure don't seem to mind that I'm here. I'm just standing there. They sure are taking their time too, aren't they? <laughs> Here's number seven. This dwarf must really be hungry. He's getting two bowls of soup.
The seven dwarves seem very pleased that you tidied their messy home. One politely asks you your name, you tell him, and he cordially invites you to sit down with them and eat the bowl of soup he got for you. <gasps> Aww. You seat yourself at the table and begin to eat the surprisingly delicious soup. Oh, this sure does go on for a bit, doesn't it? It's time for the little men to go back to the mine. Goodbye, and thanks for the soup, you call, as they take their leave. waggle. I love it. You finished your soup. Also, it was the best soup you've ever tasted. Maybe, though, you were, re you were just really hungry. Well, alright. I think this is where we're going to call it for the first episode. And uh, next time, I'll see you all right back here. Bye-bye.